Uh, the uh, marijuana topic. Uh, oh boy! No fun leak. Wait, wait, wait do you- I don't write the headlines. Oh, okay. Although I don't disagree with that headline. Okay, I'm not, I was gonna, I'm not, I was I'm not editorializing that. one way or the other when I make that statement. I'm just saying I don't write the headline. Just, okay, that's, that's that's reality. So the headline was no fun league to get out of the uh, pot policing business. But you are writing about why is the NFL all in on this in testing for marijuana? Well, I'll let you sum up your column here for the audience. I mean, basically, my thought on this, and, and if this isn't a new sentiment of mine, it's just as we got through the weekend and it was just this sort of litany of what was Alden Smith holding a joint or not, and how many times was Le'Veon Bell late or, you know, missed the guy showing up at his house or forgot to tell him he was going to Vegas for vacation. Or, like, I just feel like we're so far down the minutia of the pot rabbit hole, and it has such real effects on individuals and their lives, their seasons, their careers. It has effects on the competitive balance of divisions and the whole league. It has the effect of fans going out there and spending money, and this guy's not out there because he may have been late to a test or he had a weird sample. I'm just, I'm just worn out by it, Dan. I'm just fatigued. Like, I, I'm, over, like I'm just waving the white. Like, I can't really do it anymore. Like, I, it just seems like we're, we're in their bedrooms, we're in their dens, we're in their basements, we're in their living rooms. What is the game? What is the – like – are less kids smoking pot because the NFL has draconian rules against it? No. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. is, this, is the societal tide turning towards studying the value of medicinal marijuana, seeing what effects it can have on the brain cognitively and from a repair and relief standpoint when people suffer uh, significant blows to the head, which NFL players are contractually obligated to doing. And when you can walk down the street in Seattle or like, just spend any time in Seattle or Denver, and it's like you're in a fraternity party. You go down any given street, and it's like, whoa, I'm back to freshman year, you know, it, whatever. And, and I just don't get it. Like, now to me would be the perfect time to quietly extend the carrot to the PA and say, okay, look, if a guy gets arrested, if a guy gets caught with it, if a guy is involved in an alcohol or drug-related incident that becomes a legal matter, then you're in our system, and it's going to be a system of treatment, not shaming and wagging the finger at you. And if not, we're done. We don't need to test 350 college kids at the combine anymore. You know, what, who's gain, like, just tell me who, who's gaining from it. What am I missing? But can the NFL, how do you say it without saying it, that you're kind of signing off on marijuana use here? That, do, they, do they test for HGH? No. Well, they do, but well, they has do anyone now. ever been caught? Yeah, they do now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's a way to do it. There's a way to have your cake and eat it, too. Like, I think we all know the dirty little secret. They waited years and years and years to actually get around to having the, the, designing the program on how they test for HGH. And now the sample size are so small and the way it's set up that even the, you know, they're not really trying to catch many people. Certainly you're not going to see uh, anything close to the amount of guys using it reflected in the amount of guys who get caught. Use those same sample sizes for pot. Say we still do it, and we may catch an occasional minnow, but we're not going to catch. We're not going to cast such a wide net that we're going to continue to drag stars. You know, I mean, there's people losing seas. Like, I just don't get it. You know what I mean? The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.